it going? My name is Cameron, also known as Venus Theory, and in this video, I'm here to walk you through some more advanced features and ideas inside of Dune 3. So in this video, I wanted to cover some more of the in-depth concepts like creating your own wavetables, creating multi-timbral patches, utilizing some other extra features like audio rate modulation, and using some bonus features like creating an extra LFO using the third oscillator. Alright guys, so like I said, in this video, I'm here to show you around some of the more advanced features of Dune 3, and just share some of my own inside tips and tricks for you guys. So first off, let's dive into the other synthesis types of Dune 3. So we have VA or Virtual Analog, but let's go ahead and move on to Wavetable here. So what does Wavetable mean? Wavetable synthesis is actually a very literal term. It's a table or index of waveforms that you can scroll through and get different tones or timbres out of. The Wavetable Oscillator is a great thing for really modern EDM type basses or leads, and it's also a really great thing for pads and other things that require subtle modulation over time. So to cycle through all of the Wavetables Dune 3 comes with, you can click the Wavetable menu here, and we can see all of the factory Wavetables. I'm going to leave this on default for now. And if you want to, you can see the individual frames of that Wavetable by clicking on the waveform. So we see frame 1, which is a sine, frame 2, which is a ramp down, and frame 3, which is a square. So I'm just going to leave this on frame 1 for now. This position knob over here is what allows us to scroll through the wavetable. So if I press and hold a note and scroll with my mouse, we'll hear this cycling through the wavetable. The interpolation knob adjusts the amount of smoothing between different frames. So at a uh, full value here, it's very smooth. There's not really any audible difference between the different frames, even though there's only three of them. So it's a very smooth transition from one to three. If we drop this all the way down on the other extreme, we can hear it jumps from one waveform to the other. So in a more kind of medium value, You can get some kind of stair-stepping artifacts. This can be useful for sound design purposes, uh, but it's very cool all around to have this control to adjust this in real time. Uh, other than that, there's this one-shot mode here. So if we wanted something like the clicks, uh, we can turn this to one-shot mode. And you can hear it's very quiet. But this would allow us to create a transient sound for something like a kick drum if we wanted to make that within Dune 3. So what if you wanted to create your own wavetable? To do that, you can click this edit button and Dune 3's wavetable editor is very, very powerful. I'm not gonna cover all the features here because you can check that out in the manual. It's very comprehensive, but I just wanted to cover some of the basic ideas to get you started. So right here, we have the pencil tool. This allows us to manually draw in whatever we would like. Other than that, we have the straight line tool so we can just draw a straight line. This is good for drawing just kind of basic shapes and waveforms. We have the point tool here, which allows us to connect different dots. This is good for a bit more precise control. And then over here, we have the harmonic editor or partial editor. So I'm going to go to menu and we'll go ahead and just restart this waveform. So we'll clean this out and we'll start with one, which creates a sine wave. We can add a couple more harmonics and get something very organ like. Below that, you have the phase adjustment for the individual partials. So we can move that around and just get a slightly different timbre to it. So we could copy this and we could create a new uh, frame here, paste it and change this, maybe add another harmonic or two, something like that, okay, and we can close that and then we can scroll through our new wavetable we just made. And that's how easy it is. It's really, really fun to mess with. So next up, let's take a look at the FM oscillator. The FM oscillator in Dune 3 provides three oscillators and two algorithms. So the algorithms are here. You can click on this to change between the two. This little indication here is a feedback loop. So in uh, algorithm one here, B feeds back into itself. In algorithm two, A feeds back into itself. So we'll just leave this on the first algorithm for now. If you're not already familiar with FM synthesis, I recommend you pause this video and go check out some information on it. It's extremely powerful and it's good for a lot of different sounds like bells or pads or basses, just about anything really. So uh, Dune 3 makes this very straightforward. We get the amount or the level of that oscillator. We get a ratio control, which is the harmonic ratio, a fine tuning if you wanted to create some detuned or inharmonic sounds, key tracking here. This allows you to do a fixed frequency oscillator. So this is good for things like drums or some kind of bell uh, type sounds, kind of just depends on what you're doing. FM synthesis is really powerful stuff. Uh, the feedback control here, and that's it. It's very, very cool, very straightforward, and very fun. All right, so now we can get into the fun stuff. So one of the first things I wanted to cover is polyphonic LFOs and using them to emulate oscillator drift. 
So oscillator drift, if you don't already know, in the analog domain, when you have a synthesizer and you play a note, it's going to drift subtly in and out of tune over time. This is actually a pretty desirable trait and is something we associate with that kind of warm, gooey analog feel. So this is great if you want to create more retro sounds or you just want to have something with a bit more movement to it. So how can we set this up? So we can go to our mod matrix here and we're going to set the source as LFO1 and I want to target for now oscillator 1's fine tuning. So this is going to move the fine tuning, which sounds like this. And we get a value of plus or minus 100 cents. I believe that's cents. So let's go ahead and up the amount here. And right now LFO1 is fairly fast and it's going to modulate this by a pretty significant amount just to make it very drastic. So let's take a listen. So right now this is a monophonic LFO. So what is the difference between monophonic and polyphonic LFOs? The very simple way to put this is a monophonic LFO is going to apply globally. So if I play a chord right now, all of the notes of that chord are going to move around in their fine tuning via that LFO over time. Which is a bit goofy sounding. So now let's go ahead and click this poly button. You can hear that those notes are actually individually detuning, which is something that's really, really fun to mess with. In this case, we're going to take advantage of that polyphonic LFO function by turning this into a sample and glide LFO. So let's go ahead and go to sample and glide. If you're not familiar, a sample and glide LFO is a sample and hold LFO. It just glides between the two randomized values. So this is a great way to create that analog drift because it's not going to be something like that sine wave where it's very consistent in it's going you know, from one value to the next. In this case, it's gonna detune quite a bit, maybe not so much, maybe not at all. This is a great way to emulate that oscillator drift. So we're gonna turn this down, uh, something very small, like plus nine. We have the sample and glide LFO. Let's drop the rate pretty low. And now if we start playing some chords and stuff, we'll get a really nice analog polysynth feel. So to emulate kind of the classic analog polysynths, I'm gonna up the polyphony here to eight voices. Let's maybe do a quick filter envelope, something about like that. Touch a resonance. There we go. Adjust the amp envelope. All right, now we should have something that's a very classic synth sound. So let's take a listen. Pretty neat stuff. So next up, let's talk about creating a multi-tambral patch. So one of the most powerful things about Dune 3 is you have eight voices or layers that you can create on a single synth patch. Now in the world of hardware synths, a multi-tambral hardware synth is going to be very, very expensive, uh, let alone one that has eight different voices. So multi-tambral means you can have different sounds, and I talked about this a little bit in the beginning video. So if we solo out uh, the voices here, we have voice one, and let's turn this up to maybe three voices. So right now we have voice one, which is just gonna be this one saw wave. Let's go to voice two now, and we'll edit that. Let's turn that to a wavetable oscillator, and let's set that to, uh, I guess, maybe the morph. Cool, and then let's go ahead and modulate that with an LFO, just a little bit. All right, and then let's go to voice three, and let's go ahead and just, I guess, maybe do a quick FM sound so let's just up this ratio and up this ratio and there we go so right now that is going to be voice three voice two is our wavetable and voice one is the virtual analog so we can go ahead and turn off the solo and play all three of these layers at the same time what's really cool is you can get pretty in depth with this so let's go ahead and go back to voice two here and turn that to the active edit so let's say with voice two, we wanna have a, uh, let's just do a quick low pass. Let's do the Polaris and we'll do envelope on that and just make this a really, really long filter envelope movement and adjust the amplitude envelope. So now this is gonna sound like this. Cool, let's add a couple voices of unison here detune them and stereo spread. And then let's go ahead and maybe just add a quick uh, saw layer to that. So we'll go ahead and drop that down an octave. So now this is gonna sound like this. Cool, 
All right, let's go to voice three now. So we're gonna go to active edit three and you can see my filters and everything change over. So we can do this all per layer, which is just ridiculously powerful. So let's go back to voice two because we need to turn that sub oscillator up really quick. There we go. Okay, so back to three. Now, uh, let's say we want to, I guess let's make an ARP for this layer. So we can actually engage the ARP per layer. So right now I'm just gonna have ARP one. Um, let's just maybe make this up over two octaves. All right, that should be good. Let's maybe adjust the sound slightly. Cool, and then let's do uh, something similar here. We'll do a quick filter envelope. Get kind of that classic FM glass bell sound. And then we can go back to voice one here. And let's do a really classic, just super big saw sound. And let's set that to Gaussian mode. And let's go ahead and learn that to the mod. Well, actually we can do that in the mod matrix actually. So let's go ahead and do mod wheel to oscillator or filter one cutoff. And we wanna do this on only the first voice. So we can actually use this voice control to only have that mod wheel apply to the filter cutoff on voice one. This is extremely powerful and something to keep in mind for big multi timbral patches. So let's go ahead and up the amount. We'll start it out pretty low and let's go ahead and unsolo this voice. Now we're going to hear all three voices with voice three having the arpeggio, uh, voice two being the wavetable with the sub oscillator and voice one being a really big detuned saw sound that we can use our mod wheel to adjust the filter cutoff. So let's go ahead and give it a play. Absolutely nuts, and that is why I love Dune 3. Doing those big multi timbral patches is just fantastic. So, on top of that, uh, another thing to keep in mind for big multi timbral patches is actually your effects. So, uh, in the case of let's say this ARP, um, let's say we wanted to do some separate effects on that. I can enable effects 2 only on this voice. So, if we go back to uh, voice 2, you'll see effects 1 is active. So, on this third layer, let's say we wanted to do like a big phaser, a chorus. Uh, do some kind of delay sound, sure, and then have uh, just a really big reverb on that layer. You can hear that those effects are only being applied to that third layer, which is really, really cool. Okay, so one of the next things I wanted to touch on is audio rate modulation. So a uh, classic example of this would be, let's say, a filter FM function on a hardware synth. This is pretty popular. Usually this is done with the sub oscillator or noise oscillator. This is actually possible to do within Dune 3. You just need to adjust a few quick settings. So let's go ahead and just low pass the initialized patch here. So we have a low pass saw wave. We're gonna go into settings and in the modulation rate, we're gonna click that and go to audio rate slash highest CPU. So this is the highest CPU usage Dune 3 will have. Uh, just keep that in mind that this gets really, really intensive if you have the kind of big, crazy, multi timbral patch thing going on. However, for something really basic, like what we're about to do here with some filter FM, it shouldn't be any crazy CPU spike. So now we're gonna go into the mod matrix and what we want to assign is one of the oscillators. So let's use uh, oscillator three and we're gonna go to filter, filter one cutoff and adjust the amount. So let's go ahead and drop the fr uh, frequency down really far. And I guess we'll just use a sine wave. That way this should be a really audible effect right away. So before that, we have this, and if we bring up that sine wave, that is filter FM, which is a very classic analog sound. It's really, really cool stuff and makes some really interesting gritty sounds. So let's go ahead and just change that to a saw wave and adjust the cutoff amount. Maybe up.
Really, really cool sound. So you could also change this over to the noise oscillator if we wanted to. So let's go to noise gen. So now the noise is going to affect the filter cutoff. This can be a really good gritty, raspy type of distortion that's pretty fun to mess with. All right, so another more advanced idea I wanted to share with you guys was creating an extra LFO. So let's say we've made a patch where we've used all three LFOs and we want to assign another LFO to the filter cutoff for some reason. So if we used all our LFOs, now we're out. We only have three. You can actually create an extra one. To do this, what I would utilize is Oscillator 3. So let's go ahead and go to Oscillator 3 here. We'll go to Settings and change this to Audio Rate. And then we're going to go into our Mod Matrix. I'm going to change the waveform to Assign just because that's going to be a bit easier to hear. So we can go ahead and go to Oscillator 3 as the source, Amount all the way up, Destination, Filter, Filter 1 Cutoff. So right now, this sign is going to move the filter cutoff. We drop it all the way down. A bit more apparent, but still very fast. And LFO is a low frequency oscillator, so we need to make that lower in frequency. How can we do that? This is actually pretty easy. So what I would do is go to source, MSEG1, and then we're gonna go to oscillator three, semi, and we'll drop this all the way down. In the MSEG, we're gonna draw two points and just max them out. And now this is going to drop this by 100 semitones. <laughs> There we go. We've created an extra LFO using Oscillator 3. So this is a good little tip to keep in mind if you run out of LFOs, uh, just need an extra one for some reason, and you don't need Oscillator 3. Uh, you are stuck with only the basic waveforms, but like I said, in a pinch, this can be handy for just a quick extra LFO that you can assign to something. Okay, so one last tip I wanted to share with you guys is band splitting within Dune 3. For those of you that are into kind of modern, super aggressive bass music, this is a pretty handy thing. Otherwise, uh, it's good to know for pads and some other things, or if you wanted to create something unique, uh, like let's say a pad sound that had an arpeggiator only on the top end of it, which could be kind of cool. So how can we band split within Dune 3? Well, this is actually done just by the EQ. You can actually split the sound into two bands by utilizing the two different effects buses. So let's go ahead and create kind of a classic, uh, just detuned re-space sound, something like that. We'll drop the semitone. There we go. And now we have just kind of that classic bass sound. So we'll drop the filter cutoff here, um, something about like that. So we have that nice deep, you know, reesey sound. But what if we wanted to create something more modern, like an aggressive drum and bass reese? So we'll open up the cutoff, and what we can do is use the effects buses, like I said. So we're gonna have two voices. So I'm gonna solo out voice one and we're gonna go to active voice one. Now we're going to use effects bus one on this voice. So we'll grab our first EQ and we'll use the high cut and we'll do 36 decibels per octave. Let's do a cutoff point of maybe, yeah, 242 Hertz, somewhere around there. Now we're gonna go over to two. All right, so now we can go to effects bus two. We'll enable that for this layer, disable effects one and we'll unsolo that. Okay, so now we're doing uh, two soloed out and we're editing voice two. So effects bus two, we'll grab that first equalizer and then we're going to use our low cut, 36 decibels per octave around that same value of about 240 something hertz. There we go. So now if we play this, that's the top end of the sound. And if we solo out the first layer, that's just the low end of the sound. So for like an aggressive uh, modern bass sound on this top band here, we could do, uh, let's do a distortion. So we'll just grab saturate and just really crunch that up. We could maybe do an EQ with kind of some resonant tonal boosts, something like that. Cool, uh, let's maybe add a really ridiculous phaser, like a super phaser, sure, super high feedback. I guess something like that, and then a chorus just to give it some stereo width on the top end. Cool, and then we could go back to our first band, which is the low band of the sound, and we'll go to effects bus one. Uh, let's maybe just give this a nice big bass boost and feed that, so turn that on. Uh, we'll do a nice big bass boost with the triode mode, bit of drive, not super wet, and get a nice big growly low end. So now we can unsolo that, and now we have a band split bass sound. So really cool trick you can keep in mind for some more advanced sound design purposes.
Other than that, Dune 3 is incredibly deep. There is so much you can do within the synth. So I hope this clarified and demonstrated some concepts that you can utilize in your own sound design and get really creative because Dune 3, especially once you get into multi-timbral patches, is absolutely ridiculously powerful and just such a blast to work with. And that's it for this video. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And to find more information on Dune 3, you can go to synapseaudio.com.